Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals, and in today's, I guess, news-related video, we're going to be talking about Substance Alchemist. So, Substance Alchemist, if there hasn't really been a lot of information about it, and it was actually something, to my knowledge at least, first presented at SIGGRAPH last year in August, I believe. And then it was sort of radio silent for about six months or so, and not too long ago, Algorithmic did a live stream where they showed a bunch of new stuff from Alchemist and sort of like gave an overview of what is the software actually designed for and what can you do inside of Alchemist that you can't do in any of their other packages really. It looks like such a cool tool, yeah. which, you know, they have they have three main, so or two main software now and adding this as a third. So they have Painter, which is, you know, straight up painting, they yeah. have Designer, which is for material authoring, but it's very technical. And this seems to be like the bridge between these two. Yeah, like personally for me, um, you know, getting into getting into Painter is okay, and uh, I also spent a few weeks getting into Designer. Obviously, I'm no pro in either of them, but I can kind of use it. Designer for me was was more like a technical challenge, mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to get into the node based stuff. But it, it is very tricky to get into, and you need to invest a lot of time just to make basic stuff. Um, and it is quite hardcore. The way I see see um, Alchemist is like a hybrid almost, where you have the nice layering system from Painter, and then you combine it with some of the technical aspects from Designer, and it really enables, I think, material authoring for more people. Yeah, I'm such a big fan of this approach because when it comes to painting stuff, you you know you want to you don't want to reinvent the wheel all the time by, by making custom smart materials. No, you want to really have people who. <laughs> make proper materials for you which you can use in creative ways yeah. or if you if you are the person who are going to be painting at least you're separating out the material creation process yeah. to the more creative side you know where you now we're going to say that this bit is a little bit rusty this is a bit less rusty and it just makes it a lot easier to paint that way yeah and you know like when i was looking at this uh, one of the first things i, I thought of was uh, quixel mixer which has also been in beta for like forever, hmm. I guess. Um, and I th and I, as far as I'm aware, uh, uh, Substance Alchemist is now in like a private beta. Uh, we haven't gotten a chance to test it out, but maybe we will or something. I don't know. But it does look like a Quixel Mixer, so I'm gonna, it's going to be interesting to see how those two sort of compete and maybe uh, help each other hmm. advance the technology more and more. So I'm very excited about that. It's really good to have competitors here. Yeah, and one thing that's really exciting to me about this is. Uh, all the stuff that people do in Designer can also be imported into Alchemist. So you can have some of the super technical materials that you can then use as a base in Alchemist. Yeah, I feel there are a lot of people who they they would love to get more into material authoring, like they have a really good eye for it and all that, but the hurdle of Designer might just be a bit too much. Like you were saying before, Morton, it's, it's tricky to get into and you've yeah. got to think in a more logical way. Like node-based stuff is purely a visual <laughs> way of representing information. Yeah. And a lot of people, my brain works pretty well like that, but a lot of people's brain just doesn't, it doesn't deal with nodes. Yeah, like when you have this, this just, you know, layering system, super easy yes. to understand. Base material, you get your images on top, which is just, this is just imported from a real live cobblestone thing. Uh, bitmap to material. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. You tile it delight to get rid of the lighting and then add some mud on top to make it a little more uh, like uneven. Yeah, and know? the mud here seems to be a designer material, right? Yeah, I believe so. So, you know, really quick way to just very, very quickly design something. But what we just mentioned, uh, bitmap to material, is the current system that the substance or algorithm algorithmic has. Uh, which is, if anyone's familiar with Crazy Bump, it's kind of like Crazy Bump where you import uh, like a texture or like an image from real life and then it'll extract uh, normal information bump uh, and height that kind of stuff so yeah. you can then apply it to uh, you know your your scenes somewhere. yeah it's a really good way of getting really cool maps from a, like one single photograph yeah one thing that I, I i thought was really cool about what they did here in the live stream was the amount of tiling that they mm. could do and how easy it is to tile stuff. That was, I feel like, one of the more like restrictions of Crazy Bump was purely to create normal maps and that kind of stuff. You didn't have as much uh, control as you do 
uh, with Alchemist. No, nowhere near. And this is so, also 10 years later as well. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that they did note was that um, it does use the bitmap to material system. And once Alchemist comes out, it's going to replace that. So, you know, they'll just get rid of that because now it's built into to Alchemist. So here, one thing that was was really cool was just their, like how easy it was to build stuff up. Like we talked about before, it ended with the sort of mud stuff. And then just put like some small pebbles on top and add a water material. So these are all, these are just like filters, kind of what you have in, in designer as well, where you can just apply tons of filters on top to add some variation to your materials. The cool thing here is that it comes with a pretty long predefined list, it looks like, of filters. Mm. So, you know, if you wanted to put snow on top of your cobblestone, or if it's water, or maybe some lichen or something, then that's simply just like drag and drop. This is when texturing becomes really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, as a texture artist, you are only as strong as the source material you have. Yeah. Back in the old days, you know, it used to be uh, your quality of your maps. But now it's really the materials you have available. Yeah, and if, if the materials you have available are pictures you take from real life and you don't have to go through much of the laborious stuff of creating it all procedurally uh, in designer first, that really speeds up the authoring material authoring workflow. Yeah, and you get so much more organicness from it. Yeah. Starting with the word organicness. It is now. Now it is. <laughs> Where, you know, instead of, if you make something from scratch with procedurals, now it's inherently procedural. It's more like mechanical. Yeah. But if, you, if you're if you already starting with a photo, it's inherently organic. You just get much more, like getting to the same level of actual realism through procedurals just takes an incredible amount of work. And skill. And skill. And, you know, you, your, your observation skills have to be like, Oh, super high and also how to technically achieve it in designer uh, whereas now or soon whenever this comes out uh, you'll be able to just take stock photos mm. and create materials from it so and another cool thing just because this is like a layering system you can apply a lot of things one cool feature that i, I think they showed off was their clone patch tool so if you let's say you had this area right here and you didn't like that this sort of stuck out you can just go in and find any other part of your um of your image and simply just paint this out. So mm. this is really like, it's an interesting feature where you're all of a sudden now you're implementing uh, parts of painting features in material authoring as well. Would this, all, and I have a question here though, I'm not sure if you know this, but would this also affect the other channels for it? If you clone that out, would that affect the high channel or the specular? I think it um, maybe it just goes down like layer wise. Mm. Maybe it affects everything below it. So you probably just have your clone stamp tool on top of your bitmap to material layer, I would imagine. Okay. Maybe there's a way to like, uh, like kind of like in Photoshop, alt click it and have it only affect. The yeah, or maybe you would do the cloning on the layer or right above the base layer. So mm. the bitmap to material would just recalculate yeah. all of them. Many questions. We have many questions. We have many questions. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, I mean, definitely, I think we're going to attempt to see if we can try this out and maybe create some more actual create some actual videos on like trying to author some materials and then maybe go out we like take some shitty photos of bricks or something in, in japan in japan and try to make something cool i think that would be a fun challenge yeah that'd be really interesting now onto a subject uh i guess sparks a lot of fear in everyone's heart <laughs> ais are taking over the world oh they are and uh, they're starting with the d lighter inside of <laughs> substance uh, alchemist next so, step terminator the cool thing about the d lighter uh as far as the information i got from the stream was so the D-Lighter is AI-based, whatever that means. Whatever like, it means. Like, honestly, when people talk about machine learning and AIs, I just like, yeah, okay, one of those. We and added then, a machine learning to it's, Painter. It's like a cool. node in Designer. <laughs> We're like, okay, one AI, I'm going to plug that in. <laughs> but what it does do is the D-Lighter here just delights your albedo, which is super cool. So the D-Lighter already apparently under the hood runs on the entire image. That's how it generates your normal maps. So it seems like they're just exposing that and then applying it on the albedo. And that way it just magically gets rid of all the lighting and shadow information in the picture, which means that you can actually use this as an albedo. Because you don't want shadow information or spec information in your albedo, then it's useless. Please, Mr. AI, please work. Because I'm really, <laughs> really tired of painting out shadows from my maps. Yeah, and I, if, I mean, imagine how, how much... Because that's one of the advantages, again, uh, with procedural workflows is that you don't have to worry about that because mm. you're just like, oh, make a shape in, in designer and just color it and then we go from there. But with this, I mean, literally like the world's at your fingertips. You mm. just take a picture of a road if you want to make a road, make it tileable and boom, you're done. So I, I mean, really, I think it's a promising software. 
Then uh, we're moving on to the scan stuff. So this is all based on the substance source uh, that uh, Algorithmic has, which is, I think it's, it's, you know, it's an awesome resource where you, you simply just, I think it's a subscription-based one, some yeah, resource, it is. and it gives you access to like a crazy vast library of like smart masks and materials and generators, filters, and including scans. So just being able to pull in actual geometry and then modify, you know, put stuff on top of that is going to be super powerful because then you can make tileable scans that you then just spread out over your environment. That's insane. Like, <laughs> yeah. Would this work with, uh, would this tile the OBJ or this tile, would this, would you extract height information from this and tile the maps? I'm assuming it's just height information. Still, I, I would still, think. Still really cool. I would think that's how it works. Or maybe uh, you, you could, because I think it just exports maps. Probably many questions. <laughs> many questions. <laughs> when it comes to algorithmic, I'm 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 not assuming it's the oh of course it would only be mapped because they they can do magic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> where you're just like well maybe maybe it could be meshes. Who like, knows? One of the cool things that they showed in conjunction with um, the scans was their splatter filter, material splatter, where you apply a material splatter and then here on the left hand palette you just see a bunch of different materials like pine cone, one, two, three, and then some branches. So that's all this extra stuff here. So if you go back, all of that information is missing. Now you're like, okay, cool, yeah, applies it as a texture on top. No, 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 it applies it as a height map on top. And that way you have actual geometry that then gets put on top. But not only that, it also reads, reads the underlying geometry, conforms to it. So if you were to put like one of these uh, pine cones on top here and scale it a little bit and then it moves on top of the branch, it would actually conform to the branch, giving you like an extra layer of realism, which, well, you know, everyone wants extra layers of realism and just makes it a lot easier. Then we have some community stuff, which again, it sort of ties into the substance source stuff, but they were also showing uh, substance share, I think it's called, which, so I'm not entirely sure what Substance Share is compared to Substance Source, because like there's a bunch of free stuff stuff on Substance Share. Um, I think they have tutorials as well, as well as smart materials that you can just use from there. So directly just drag and drop, download any material. Um, it seems like any Substance Designer material kind of works. Like all the parameters are the same. I think that's the cool thing about having like an ecosystem, is that you can just you can especially when you own all of them, it's very easy to make them play together. Yeah, if you're, if you're running a competitive software now, let's say it's, it uh, rhymes with Fari, <laughs> you know, then you, know, you, you might want to look into the whole ecosystem thing. I think this is a, one of the real strengths of, of uh, Algorithmic here. I mean, yeah, individually, Painter is awesome, mm. and this is awesome, and uh, Designer is awesome. But if you combine them, it's not like one plus one plus one is three. They are like combined. It's like infinite. It's so much more powerful because yeah. now you can, you can have people in within your only within your ecosystem can just make awesome stuff. Yeah. And in the future, we're just getting more and more of this. It's not that material authoring is going away. It's just becoming more and more prevalent in society. Yeah. Yeah, and it's. I mean, this is just going to keep evolving. Like it's really cool seeing how quick you could go from something like this. I think this was a substance share material that was just used and then just quickly, you know, in the filter list, just find some filters to offset it a little bit and some dust on top, some dirt, height modulation, and then some water on top just so we get that extra bit of realism. Like it was really quick in a matter of like a minute or two, you have a very advanced um, looking material. Honestly, if I were to create this from scratch, myself and it had to be tileable without any of the algorithmic tools that would have been <laughs> it would have been almost impossible it would have taken me a week to do yeah and then i think this was like the last thing they showed which was the uh, there's there's multiple ways to import uh images into uh, alchemist and this one was the not bitmap to material but multi-angle images to material or something like that where um they had like this a super perfect setup of, uh, of this little piece of fabric that they they photographed and then uh, pulled in all those images into Alchemist. So I think this is cool for multiple reasons because this allows you to whatever you're creating physically. Like uh, I remember when I was working on uh, Baby Groot's costume, 
we 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 wanted to recreate that in 3D, you know, as as much as we could because there was like real world uh, photography from set, so we needed to match that exactly. So the way we did it was like, okay, we had two setups. Here's the real setup in pictures with a turntable, a real world turntable, and then the 3D turntable, and you match it. With this system, you can just take these multi-angle pictures and pretty instantly create that material one-to-one -one in 3D. And that also allows you to very quickly prototype if, I don't know, if you're Nike or something, you want to make some new sock shoes or something, just quickly take some pictures, put it into Alchemist, and then you can play around with the colors. You can separate it out into, you know, because the bitmap to material still runs, separate that into the bump and then separate, separate out the different channels. It's... It just seems like a crazy software, honestly. Yeah, looking at all this kind of stuff, I'm feeling really excited about 3D for the first time in a long time now. I yeah. feel I feel particularly texturing has been very stagnant since forever. <laughs> like there hasn't been 10, any. 15 years. Yeah, exactly. There hasn't really been anything that interesting in yeah. in the field. So seeing this kind of stuff makes me makes me happy again. <laughs> yeah. No, but but also like this helps everyone in the pipeline and it speeds up the workflow. It allows us to create a more believable and like more fun and crazier materials like the the sort of variation one they they showed where it was they like they just dragged in some random image and that hmm. automatically like you can see the base color is here it just picks out colors from this maybe i don't know with one machine learning there as well <laughs> and then just applies it to um to whatever material you have and that allows you to really quickly prototype you know maybe okay i have 10 examples in like five minutes so I think all in all, it just looks like very promising software. And I mean, I'd be very curious to see, have a look at the Quixel Mixer as well, to see how they two, how the two compare and just to see how, how can they push each other forward. Yeah, very excited to see where they're going with all this. Mm. So thank you so much for watching. We would love to hear your thoughts on Alchemist as well. And yep. maybe we missed something about it. Maybe oh, there, are some, <laughs> there are some more special features. We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on, on the software. So uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the little bell button to turn on notifications so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.